<laughs> a Looney Tunes cutout. They're behind him. Now they're in front and behind him. Dude, what a plate. What These plates are really good. This is all captured in camera. It has to be, but how? Today's episode is brought to you by Morning Brew. Become smarter in five minutes with their free daily newsletter. Good morning, Kevin. <laughs> Welcome, back. <laughs> Welcome back to Visual Vex Artists React and good morning, Kevin. I hope you are having a great weekend so far and we're about to make it better with these clips. I want to show you guys some more Resident Evil stuff. I watched this and I just thought of like nephew VFX. No one was ready. No one was ready. No for one that. was ready. <laughs> no one was ready for one person to take out a pistol. So basically they eat up their practical effects budget really fast and then very quickly everything is just nephew. This one's bad. Uh, oh no atmospheric perspective on that wire. First off, she must be on a blue screen. She's right on there. a green yeah, she's on a green screen. There's no way they're just popping off these squibs behind her and she's like, whatever. All right, and meanwhile, this little black line. <laughs> so when you say nephew effects, what we mean is like, there's simple little things that just literally looking at what you're working at, like you could fix it. Like there's literally reference in this shot. All the person doing this shot with the cable needs to do is look at the color values of that soldier standing in the doorway. That's the exact same color values that that black wire should have when it's at the doorway. They are putting the, the VFX right on top of the reference and they're getting it wrong. Here's what I'm trying to look at is like, what killed him? Was it the grappling hook that pierces his chest? Or was, <laughs> was it the pull and slam into the table? <laughs> He's just bumping the table. <laughs> like I, I run into my own furniture at that speed <laughs> like pretty frequently. Classic. Oh, heck yeah. Umbrella branded RPGs. Wow, this, she has a lot of time to react. <laughs> Whoa, she has so much time to react. Those things are literally traveling at like one mile an hour. <laughs> <laughs> a Looney Tunes cutout. A Looney Tunes cutout. Perfectly circular cutout. So, is anybody shooting at the same thing? Nobody, <laughs> nobody knows what anyone's shooting at. Oh, and there's one guy with like a cool muzzle flash that's different in the background, shooting through them, by the way. Dude, look how CG that car looks, dude. Yeah. It's not, though. Yeah, it's definitely not. That's real fire. That's the thing. And also notice the light on the ground. Yeah, it does reflect in the puddles correctly, but there is like a bunch of harsh matting also. I feel like they actually shot full-scale cars on that exact same street. That's kind of what I'm Different day, too. filmed separately and put together, but I'm inclined to think that it's still the same spot I agree. that they filmed at, full scale. Uh, there might be a little bit of practical explosion there, but I think there's a totally like artificial explosion added in after the fact. Oh, oh, And you can also oh, see a, yep, a total yep. like masking yeah, line. Definitely there a mask there. The two fire. Notice how the fire of the car is at proper exposure, but the fire on the ground is slightly grayed down. There's a lot of old movies out there with visual effects in them. And the reason they're so special is unlike the films of today, there's no 3D programs, there's no after effects, there's no simulations. Everything here is done with like actual tricks. Which takes me to one of my favorite things to do on this show, which is to show you guys clips and have you guys guess at how they did them. So, we're kicking things off with the Wizard of Oz, the tornado. Let's take a look. It's a twister! It's a twister! Oh boy. I was so scared of that tornado too. God, it's a scary tornado. It's still like, it's very iconic and it's from 1939. Look, look at that, it's in the background. Wait, it's in the- Wait, oh my, okay, hold up though. Okay, they're definitely on a real set. There's no way that's rear projection. That'd be the biggest projection in the world. Oh, oh, huh? you see it? The parallax doesn't match. The moment the camera started moving sideways, you can see the ground moving with proper parallax, but the distance was flat. This is all captured in camera. It has to be, but how? Here's the thing. I can go to a science museum and I can see a tornado display using fan technology. <laughs> you know, like it exists. Fan technology. It's definitely a created tornado of some sort. Like a real tornado has a lot more like diffusion at its yeah. edge rather than this, which actually looks very sharp. All right, Nico, we gotta know. <laughs> Here's how they did it. We gotta know. It's crazy because it's so simple. It's a 35 foot long muslin tube of cloth. And it's on like a rolling gantry at the top and a stick on the bottom and they're moving around in opposite directions. And then they have a bunch of fuller's earth, which is basically a very fine earthy oh, yeah. powder. And they're spraying it into the tube from the bottom and around from the bottom. They're spraying it down from the top. And because the cloth itself is so loose, the dust is not only billowing at the tops and bottoms, it's also coming out the sides of the cloth, giving you a smoky tube effect. 
That's and not at all what I would have expected. That's, that's it. Some of the shots are miniatures that it cuts to slash, you know, set up, basically dioramas. You know, it's a set. It's going, it's forced perspective kind of stuff. Yeah. Like this. This I'm pretty sure is a miniature. Hold up, that's the exact same view. That's the exact same view as the one when she was walking oh, by, there except go. there's a fence in front of they it now. They just reused the footage. They probably got that shot the previous day, and then on the next day they just projected it up on the screen. Honestly, rear projection, doing that sort of thing, like we're talking about Mandalorian and the volume tech, this is what that was back in the day. Also, their use of fans sells everything. Yeah. Like, fan they technology. They didn't have a fan technology. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this movie has so much groundbreaking stuff in it. Yeah. I totally took for granted that the tornado was like a big deal. These have been some great clips. And Kevin, if you're watching, leave a comment telling everyone that they should subscribe as well. Thanks, Kevin. Don't let us down, Kevin. I'm, I'm trusting in you. You want one more? Wait, more. you got one more? I want to see how you guys react to it. Oh, boy. <laughs> they're behind him. Now they're in front and behind him! Are you kidding me? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? These are ghosts? <laughs> I am noticing, Wait like, weird shadows. Like, I think the- Wait a second. Wait a second. These, these are being puppeted, first off. That's what I'm seeing then. It's, it's sticks. I'm seeing something that is occluding them. Every once in a while. It's a little black line. I see the black line every once in a while. And so that's a stick in the shoe. Dude, this is the original like VFX TikTok. Okay, so I am definitely <laughs> seeing <laughs> This is the original. <laughs> look at all these editing tricks they're using to make it look like there's shoes here. So there's definitely some sort of like merging process going on between Fred Astaire dancing here and the shoes dancing around him. I do agree that the shoes were puppeted somehow. I feel like I need to give you a little guidance here. Okay. There's no puppetry. Those are people wearing those shoes. Okay, okay, so what are the lines then? They filmed all six people doing this at the same time, dressed in black on a black stage with black cloth. Okay. So the only thing you really have is the shoes. So I'm basically just doing a screen pass from a shoe dance performance with all these people. When they're doing the circle, the weird lines you're seeing is them literally painting in the shoes that are being occluded from the people as they walk over the other shoes. So you're seeing the legs effectively highlighted of that actor in the front with the white shoes. Those are their legs and they're painting the shoes behind them manually by hand. Okay, that makes sense, okay. What I still do not get is how they're able to both get the shoes in front of him and behind him at the same time. Straight up old good-fashioned hand roto work, also known as traveling mats back in the day. All right, wow, this is legitimate rotoscoping you're talking about. I'm cutting it out and blocking it with pieces of paint and paper and all that kind of stuff. We do that today, like it's the same technique. He just takes his guns out. <laughs> <laughs> he's just dancing. He's like, I think I'm a gun. <laughs> he's like, whips out his gas. This is the most Dude. absurd. <laughs> Did I like his gun down? <laughs> 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 out out of context, the scene is very, very funny. Oh my god. Uh, well, that was a special one. I love old effects. They're the best. Dude, geriatric VFX. They're also clever and cool and full of trickery. I'm only finding those because people happen to be like, oh, this is a film I watched when I was a kid and it blew my mind and they shared it in the comments. So please, share any like old VFX from before the era of computers that feel like magic tricks and we will come in and we'll figure it out and we'll show you how it's done. So speaking of older movies, there's this one called Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which came out the year I was born. I have not seen this movie in years, but there's a lot of things just from like looking for YouTube clips for this real quick that like suddenly all the nostalgia started hitting me. The idea behind this movie is that you have this mad scientist tweaking around with some scientific equipment. All of his children end up getting accidentally shrunk down to like a quarter inch tall, and then they get stuck in the backyard. Instead of it being like a jungle, they actually basically created all these sets and props. But that's not all they did. This bee, for instance. Notice how it's flying good. around. That looks really good. Hey, they're doing these shots pretty well. Yeah, these background shots are pretty sweet too, actually. Dude, what a plate. What These plates are really good. There's a level of natural wobble and shake that makes it look kind of like on a wire or something. It's totally just a dude running with a camera. <laughs> really? It's yeah. a dude running around with a camera? Yeah. Hell yeah. The thing that makes it work is the fact that it's an extremely wide angle lens because it makes the environment seem so much bigger, which helps accentuate something that is small. 
And so for the B, they actually did a couple different things. One, they actually had a full-sized B set that anytime you've seen a close-up of like a person falling down and landing on the B, that's the actual prop. They also had a smaller stop-motion B with miniature people on them. Oh, so those aren't real people on the back of it for that shot. That was a miniature. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's pretty well done. Anytime you're seeing like the full B and whatnot and it's moving really fast, those are miniature people. Man, they're handling like fuzzy edges and motion blur so well. Yeah, just I, I found a lot of this very interesting. They sold to me as a child that these people were small and most of that was done with giant sets. You know, they made a real giant cereal bowl set. That's so cool because like it's so mind boggling to try and imagine how you would get a shot like that practically. Like, do you just need a super small camera? You're actually kind of touching on a huge problem when it comes to trying to film small things and make them feel small. So when you're getting close to something, you're focusing on something really close, anything out of focus becomes extremely out of focus, giving you very, very, very shallow depth of field. You are going to have such a tiny fraction of a plane that's in focus and everything else is gonna be so blurry, it's gonna be almost impossible to see. They kind of had that problem on these movies back in the day where they're trying to make stuff feel small, but they can't actually do that depth of field. But recently, over the last several years, Ant-Man, they did this. But they actually <laughs> had proper depth of field on a lot of these shots. This shot starts out as a normal shot filmed with a regular camera in a regular room. The field of view goes really wide, but everything is still relatively in focus. But as we get down to that point where the focus point is right in front of the lens, that's when the depth of field really starts to get shallow. And when you're filming stuff in miniature, this is pretty accurate to what your lens would look like. In fact, it would be even more out of focus. Exactly. But you could close down your aperture enough to get it to be tight. And this is something you can only achieve with CG cameras. You physically cannot get a lens into position because just the bulkiness of the lens would be in the way of itself. I think my favorite gag out of this entire movie is when they just cut to the big looking down shot and it's like the train just stops and it's like no! <laughs> <laughs> But that's like another brilliant way to really accentuate the fact that they're all small is just reminding you they're doing a whole train fight on toys mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I just had a horrible dream. I was waking up every day without today's sponsor, Morning Brew. I had terrible dreams about information coming to me through Twitter and not knowing if I should inform myself on what's going on in the world of business and finance. It was so confusing and horrible. All I wanted to do was get out, and thankfully, with today's sponsor, Morning Brew, I can get a free daily newsletter of witty, relevant, and informative information in the business, tech, and finance space. That allows me to help start my day feeling positive, refreshed, and ready to go to take on the world. Come here, world! Don't be scrolling through the Twitter trash. Don't be scrolling through social media or not knowing what's going on in the world at the same time. Put yourself in a place where you get your information from a company that combines the art of journalism with the art of waking up and having a constructive and positive day. One article that I read recently was on the price of lumber. If you don't think lumber is important, look at the walls around you. They're probably made out of lumber. And recently, it came down almost 41% since its May record highs, despite the fact that the housing market is still hot. It's little interesting tips like this that you learn from Morning Brew across business, tech, and finance. They curate it, they make it beautiful, they make it well presented, witty, relevant, and informative. That makes it entertaining to read and informative. That's the best kind of news. It's the best way to consume your information. And now I know every day when I wake up, man, sunshine on the horizon. So if you're interested in getting smarter in just five minutes, click the link in the description below and get yourself signed up for the Morning Brew daily newsletter. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We will see you next week or maybe even tomorrow as well. Every Sunday, we got some baller videos coming out. They're the, like the little sibling of the Saturday videos. It's, yeah, my little brother, but you look at him and he's like seven feet tall and like four feet wide. <laughs> <laughs>